and we're in Switzerland, so we should start on time. And I'll hand over to my uh, first speaker. But before I do that, um, please remember to ask your questions on Zulip. So start thinking now. Thank you. So this talk is going to be about Dolphin, a cellular voice-based internet shutdown resistance system. My name is Piyush, and this work was done in collaboration with folks at IIIT Delhi. <clears throat> so when we talk about shutdowns, they are a recently newer phenomena uh, and an extreme form of censorship in which the internet is completely cut off in a particular region, mobile, broadband, alike. And as you can see from this graph that it's quite prevalent. A lot of countries are actually doing internet shutdowns of varying duration. And the number of countries that are performing shutdowns are also increasing. So you can see in 2016 there were 25, but now we have uh, more countries that uh, do this. <clears throat> so what does this impact? What kind of impact does shutdown have? Because our lives are very much highly dependent on internet for even tasks such as you know healthcare, education, banking, and even due to COVID, uh, a lot of our activities actually shifted online. And with shutdowns, it's kind of very difficult to somehow quantify what the impact of these are, as also uh, uh, cited by a, a UN report. But just to give you some examples, even basic, basic tasks such as accessing news or maybe sending important emails, uh, it becomes difficult. You know, imagine you are in a new city and maybe you have some medical emergency and you really want to find out who, what are the you know, nearby hospitals, it will not be possible in these regions if you want to do that. So with this impact, what, what is our goal? What do we want to do? How can we do something for this? So our idea was to have something with which you can at least access some basic applications in these internet shutdown regions. And these applications can be very basic, such as maybe sending email, accessing some new snippets, or maybe posting something on Tweet. This was our you know, initial idea that we wanted to go uh, forward with. And it should not be something uh, which is very difficult for the users to use. It should not you know, have the dependency that you need to have some satellite phones or things like that, which are very hard for normal users to procure. So with these goals in mind, the solution that we built in this work uh, utilizes the cellular voice channel, given that all the internet, uh, the, the complete internet channel is completely shut down. Our observation in these regions from most of the document cases, documented uh, orders that we could find is that they disable uh, the internet, they disable the SMS, but the cellular calls con uh, function for uh, most of these uh, shutdown events. And with this observation in mind, we build the system where the high level idea is that <clears throat> uh, the, the user is in a shutdown region. It needs access to another user to whom he can actually initiate a cellular call. And that region should not be having an internet shutdown. And the idea is simple. He will be having a laptop in which he will be having an application in which he'll maybe let's say send, uh, type something that will be converted uh, to some audio signals and will be sent directly to the microphone of the phone that he have on, the, on their side. And this audio signal will be carried forward through the whole uh, cellular network reaching the other side where these data uh, uh, gets decoded to bits and gets forwarded to the actual application. But to build the system, there were actually significant challenges, technical challenges, which I'll now uh, uh, enlist. So initial, the, the first challenge was uh, that in the cellular voice channel, there's a lot of background processing that happens in the form of automatic gain control, uh, voice activity detection, you know, which really limits the uh, kind of uh, data rate that you can have in these channels. And, and also the cellular channel is by default very highly bandwidth constrained because it's made for applications which should only somehow send some voice data to the other side, which is perceivable and not you know, for sending data bits. On top of that, the cellular channel is lossy, and for accessing internet applications, we need some form of reliability. The channel is not end-to-end -end encrypted. That also we need to provide. And lastly, we also need to ensure that it should not be very trivial to detect if such a system is being used. So I'll now go into how we actually uh, try to address these challenges in this work. So for the first challenge, where we need to send our bits into the, uh, the channel, we needed to de uh, uh, devise a modulator and with which we can encode data bits to audio. There were various techniques available, but we went ahead with frequency shift keying. I'm not going into the details of why we selected that. But even with that, the amount of data rate that we could get 
with this modulator was not very high when we tested on real cellular networks. So as you can see, you know, for varying uh, you know, size of, of the content that we transferred over this network and for the varying bit rate, we kind of tried to find a sweet spot at 64 bits per second in which you can see that the error rate is close to 1%, uh, but it is still something that we can manage, but we cannot go as high as 256 uh, you know, bits per second where the error rate is 20%. And in order to handle uh, this kind of uh, errors, one person, in the next step, what we did was we also built a reliability layer on top of uh, this channel, on top of this modulator. And what we went ahead with was a custom TCP-like uh, reliability layer and not actually use TCP itself, because we have seen that the amount of data that we can send on this channel is highly limited. And if we'll be just be transmitting ACKs and other packets, which are, let's say, 40 bytes, uh, it, it you know, wastes a lot of time. And so we replace it with things like, you know, we just need one bit per message to acknowledge them. So that really reduced a lot of load and helped us maybe, you know, gives little better performance. And how we did that is, it's just, you know, these uh, simple steps where we combine a chunk of data and send it in a batch from the caller to the callee, and then it will just check uh, uh, if these are correct and then send an acknowledgement. And if I'll zoom them out a bit, you can see that this each chunk has a, its own packet structure that we develop, where we need sequence number to you know, arrange those packets, the payload, and a small integrity check in these individual chunk itself to decide if it is corrupted or not. And if it is corrupted, that will be appropriately informed by the other end, and they will again you know, retransmit. And so we just considered uh, the cases, which uh, will basically overall uh, provide reliability, and in, in our setup, we could not find any case that we missed during our experiments. With this reliability uh, in place, we now at a higher layer want some sort of confidentiality. It should not be like they should be able to listen what we are you know, transmitting on the cellular channel. For that, we built a, a, a basic uh, <coughs> uh, uh, encrypted channel where we exchange uh, keys and then we use authenticated encryption to perform it over the whole data and send a tag with it. And with the reliability layer and the authenticated tag, we were able to ensure that all the data uh, reaches the other end. And this whole system is, it looks something like this, the complete stack, where, the, we, devise, where we divide the working of it in different layers, from application to transport to data link. And if you take an example, let's say you have some important email that you have to send. It will first go through this encryption decryption block where you will see that uh, it is you know, converted into some random bits. It will then, by the reliability layer, be arranged in you know, packets and chunks with all those packet structure. And eventually, it will be converted by the modulator to this audio signal that you can transfer over the cellular network. It will reach the other end, and the reverse process will be repeated, where reliability protocol will detect if there is some error and you know, try to retransmit and get it back. And finally, it will go to the upper layers and eventually to the application on the other end. <coughs> so, Accessing, uh, so we were able to use this to access actual internet applications, uh, such as tweet uh, and email, and uh, accessing news. And we tried to send a tweet and email of varying sizes, and these are some of the results, where you can see a 500 character email was sent in about one and a half to two minutes, and a tweet could be sent using Dolphin you know, in under a minute for most of the cases. And similar was the case for uh, accessing news items. So this is all about the performance aspect, but then we also had the detectability aspect of Dolphin for which we needed to perform a security analysis. And it was very hard for us to define a precise uh, you know, threat model for Dolphin because cellular providers are not considered as adversaries generally, and they're known for their surveillance capabilities, but we do not know how much censorship capabilities they have. So assume that sensor can downgrade modes, eavesdrop, alter traffic, and you know, but it cannot disable the voice channel completely. That is outside our model for this consideration, or hamper the voice quality to the extent that it becomes unusable. And with this, we uh, check the feasibility of different types of attacks, from perturbation uh, to active enumeration to traffic uh, or signal analysis, where perturbation was a slightly different way of uh, doing an attack, where they will just uh, perturb the channel in a way that only Dolphin gets hampered, but the normal voice call will still probably function with some kind of uh, you know, inconvenience in hearing at the other, other end. So I'll not go into the details of all the other attacks for which I would recommend you look at the paper, but <clears throat> I'll go into perturbation attacks. So I'll just enlist you a few cases. 
So let's assume that uh, the, the, the adversary just you know, introduces random perturbations at random intervals in a channel that can be easily recovered by our reliability layer because it can uh, 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 recover from these channels. But then what the adversary would want that it should be completely unusable, the system. For that, it will need to corrupt each and every chunk. Only then the system will become completely unusable. And if they do that in the cellular channel, then the quality for even normal users degrades to the extent that it becomes unusable. So that is something which they will not want to do. And lastly, there can be cases where they try to intelligently target certain mechanisms, such as, let's say, the ACK packet. If they always can corrupt the ACK packet itself, uh, then you know they will uh, make the system unusable because it will go in an infinite loop of T transmissions. And for that, uh, our small mitigation is to send an acknowledgement after each chunk rather than batching you know, multiple chunks and sending them together. Because now if they have to disrupt it, then they will, uh, uh, they will have to basically come to case two, which will make the channel unusable. So to summarize, uh, this work dealt with the uh, situation of internet shutdowns, which is an extreme form of censorship, and it impacts various stakeholders. And we developed the system on the cellular voice channel to access some basic lightweight applications. We overcame various challenges in the form of reliability, uh, uh, in sec uh, the security of the channel uh, by providing different solutions. And lastly, we were able to implement it and test it for actual applications such as Twitter, email, and news. And each of them take a few minutes to be accessed. And the code for this is public available. If someone wants to use it and have some feedback, uh, I'd be happy to talk about it. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much. Um, let's see if we have any questions come in. Um, okay, uh, first question. Um, it looks to me that 256 bits per second could work well with a good error correction and give a higher throughput than the 64 bits per second scheme. What am I missing? So if you have to enable, so we did, thank you for the question, we did consider actually incorporating error correction rather than having a reliability layer. But that forward error correction has to make some assumptions about what is the maximum error that can happen in the channel. And that is something very hard to define for cellular channel with respect to transmitting data bits. Because it can, you know, we have seen cases where for complete, you know, two, three seconds you cannot transmit data and then, so it becomes very hard to model with respect to that thing. And that is why we went for explicit reliability layer uh, 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 in contrast to going for forward error correction or other error correction mechanisms. Thanks. And a highly voted question. You said the cellular provider was allowed to eavesdrop on the channel. Isn't it trivial for it to identify Dolphin as opposed to a normal voice call? Yes. So I did not cover it in the talk, but we do consider this scenario. And what we actually do is we combine the data transmitted with an actual audio that is played on top of the channel. So it will be like there is this audio. Uh, it is uh, added with our encoded data bits, and that is what is transmitted on the channel. So if you'll do some analysis, there is already some voice with some background noise that they would kind of hear, and it will be hard for them to characterize uh, uh, such a behavior. So we do take some steps to mitigate this to whatever extent that is possible. Okay. Um, and what's specific to the cellular network here? Can you do the same on the landline as well? Yes, I think. If there is landline connectivity, we can use this, and I think it is much more reliable, but I'm not sure that all the users will be having that kind of a connectivity uh, in those regions. So I think it can definitely be extended to landline uh, uh, channels as well. Okay, and I think a final question we can probably fit in. Yes, how does this system scale for multiple users connecting to the same cell tower? Sorry, <coughs> can you how, how does the system scale for multiple users connecting to the same cell tower? So s connecting to cell tower is not an issue. If a user can find another proxy outside uh, the internet shutdown region, till that time, uh, you know, there won't be any problem because the cellular ta tower can in any ways, you know, handle, uh, you know, thousands or maybe hundreds of thousands of uh, cellular calls. So that is not an, uh, a problem. And on top of that, we also provide something known as uh, uh, an automated side of the receiver where the user can himself deploy its infrastructure on the cloud so that whenever he's in shutdown, he can directly contact that using something known as voice automation services. So, yeah. 
Sorry, I think we've got to, to move on, but um, please do take your question offline. Um,